All right, let's see how this works. Got a lot of jangling going on here. A lot of, a lot of wobbles. Hopefully this isn't too bad. But you see all those fancy YouTubers, and they record their videos while they're driving, right? To and from the cool hunting locations and all that good stuff. So I thought, yeah, Death by Bungie needs to offer a similar level of video. I'm going to my food plots. I'm going to check out the food plots and see what kind of service those food plots need. Doing a little food plottery. So I've got two food plots that we put in, the well pad food plot and the ridge of the staging food plot. Those two food plots, what I've always called them. Little tiny food plots. They've gotten smaller and smaller over time. They are now micro food plots, bait-sized food plots. I write about that concept in my book, The Death by Bunchy Crossbow Method. I have dispensed with the notion that I am somehow feeding all the deer and helping my herd and doing all of that. Really what I'm doing is I want to see deer when I go hunting. I want to sit in a tree stand or sit in a blind and see deer in front of me, right? And that's what these little food plots do. In Pennsylvania, we can't bait. So I bait with food plots, they're bait sized food plots. What I did for these food plots is I frost seeded clover in the spring. And I wanna to talk to you a little bit about some of the problems I've had, right? Sometimes you knock it out of the park and it works, other times you don't. The well pad food plot, I put in that food plot. And one of the big reasons that food plots can fail, whether it's clover or anything else, is weeds, right? Weeds are a big problem. When I threw that seed down, I did it right before rains, when the ground is still expanding and contracting a little bit in the spring, right before the you know the late winter you know, time of year where you're you know sometime between the frosting and the rains and all that. But it works that seed in good for you. It gets good seed to soil contact, and the clover grew up in that plot perfectly. However, the grasses came back to life, and by uh, the beginning of July, end of June, you start to see the grasses and you see where it's going. It's going to overtake the food plot. So what I did, in fact, this food plot, the, the well pad, was full of daisies. It was growing up like there were daisies throughout the whole thing, right? Whatever it is about the soil right there, the daisies loved it. So deer, deer will eat the daisies probably, but you're not going to have a food plot based on daisies with one of the clover. And that those daisies get so high that the sun doesn't get down there to the clover, doesn't grow as well. And so you've got the, you don't want these other things competing with the clover. You got to reduce that. So what I did is I went through with a scythe and I we and I just knocked it all down by hand. It's a small food plot, so I can do that. Got a little blister on my thumb and everything. But knocked all that down, took a pitchfork, carried it all off, got rid of it. All that's gone. And when I come back, uh, the there were still some grasses and stuff that were starting to recover. Dr. Grant Woods will tell you mowing really doesn't do anything for grass. You mow your lawn every week or whatever, and the grass is always there. It doesn't. It just makes the grass thicker. So we aren't going to be mowing. We're not. We're not going to knock it down with that and expect that to fix the, fix the grasses. I'm going to put my blind right over there. Clean that little spot so we can shoot this entire area. What I did is I got some uh, arrest max that I had laying around, right? That I've had for a few years, just never had a chance to use it. And I got a little bottle this big, cost a million dollars, but you only use like two tablespoons. Uh, you know, but I mixed it up a little gallon spray or two gallon spray or walked around with a jug and sprayed it and I hit that whole plot. And when I came back, kaboom, that looks great, right? I think we have overcome. We're going to check on it again today and see how that did. I think it did pretty good. I'm suspecting it's going to look pretty sweet, okay? That will have fixed the grass problem enough to get me to the fall so that I have a clover food plot to hunt over. Now, that's a pretty small clover food plot. One thing to take into account, why do food plots fail? Why would a clover food plot fail? One thing is size, right? Another thing is size. If that food plot isn't big enough to feed the deer in the area, they will they'll, they will eat the whole thing right down to nothing. And then you got nothing left when the hunting season comes. That's a legitimate possibility. However, from previous experience, I can tell you there aren't enough deer there to make that happen. I have hunted over clover there before. Uh, numerous times when the plot was about that size, maybe a little bit bigger. But as long as I see the little blossoms, the flowers, that tells me that that clover is surviving the deer forage. And what I mean by that is the clover is getting tall enough and mature enough to allow it to express those little flowers. That means the deer aren't eating it down to the point where it can't get that big, right? 
where it can't put a, a blossom or a flower to the seeds or whatever. So I feel pretty good about that. That tells me that that is going to be sufficient for the fall, that clover. Uh, mowing, some people are like, oh, you got to mow your clover. And the, the, pre, the old school thought is you mow the clover when it gets to a certain height. And I used to do this. And what that does is it inspires the, the uh, clover to rebound. So it puts out more shoots and it gets thicker and it grows better and all that. I don't do that. I don't mow anymore. One reason I don't mow is because I don't have the equipment anymore, right? That's a big reason. Another reason why I'm really not interested in mowing is because I have smaller food plots and I don't need to mow those, right? They're small. I can do it by hand. If I had to mow it, I could just weed whack it or whatever, uh, knock it down with a scythe. But it's a small enough food plot where the deer keep it trimmed for me. So I don't need to mow, right? I don't need to mow that food plot. Now we have another food plot to talk about, that ridge staging food plot. I did the exact same thing the same weekend. I threw down some clover seed, let it work itself, let nature work its magic and work those seeds into the soil. And I had a great food plot going, a great clover food plot there. It was greened right up. I have Hackett sprayed a few trees around the southern side of it and that southern boundary. And the end result of that is it lets more sunlight into that food plot. I was hoping to expand it, maybe have a little bit more growth in there, positive results. And the problem that I have with that food plot is the same problem every year. I get chickweed, curly dock, and Canadian clearweed in that food plot. So what we're going to do today, we're going to go down there and we're going to look at this food plot. And we are going to see what our options are, what options we have to take care of this food plot find out let's go check out what we got out here go for a little walk and see what we have going on right so i am out here in the little orchard and if you look up there behind me see that guy that friends of bungee is the 100 year old apple tree that's pretty cool i like that and also a handful of other apple trees that i have planted over the years to give us more hunting opportunities, more food for deer, that kind of thing down the road. And they had eight of them here. Only four of them have survived. So here's the ridge staging food plot, which used to be clover and now looks like clearweed, huh? If you look in here, there's clover. No doubt about that. There is clover in there. Oh man. Actually, there's lots of clover down in there. You know what? We'll give it a shot here. I think I'm going to go through with a sickle, with a swing blade, and I'm going to, I'm not going to spray this after all. I'm going to go through, knock the tops off all that stuff and get rid of that. This is the curly dock right there, in case you're wondering. And this is your Canadian clear weed. Looks like thistles. But we're going to go through there and knock all that off. But if you look, there's lots of clover in there. Let's zoom in a little bit. That looks like clover to me. Yeah, we'll knock the tops off all this stuff with a swing blade. And then I'll go through, and right there's my bag. I've been storing that. That is potassium. It's potash. It's 21040. It's like a fertilizer. A little bit of phosphate, but a little phosphorus, but it's mostly potassium and very little nitrogen, right? Almost none. So I'll go through and spread this, and it will help boost that clover maybe if we get a rain here in the next few days. On top of that, the clover will like that and grow. The, the risk is, though, that clear weed and curly dock also like potassium. I don't know. They probably do because they're broadleaves, but we'll find out, right? But we'll put the rest of that fertilizer on here and see if we can salvage this plot. If I set back the curly dock and set back the clear, leaf, clear weed, um, it'll be in good shape. Last year, what I did is I went through with the curly dock and I just pulled it by hand. And it doesn't seem like it's as bad this year as it was last year. Last year, those it gets real big leaves on it. There's your swing blade right there. I've already put it to some good use, but look what it does. It's working pretty good. It's not the greatest tool in the world, but if you go through and just take the tops off it like that, I'm getting rid of all of that clear weed, but we still got some happy clover. A little bit of handiwork there, 20 minutes, and I went through and I laid it all down. It was real watery stuff. It's like a real watery plant. So when you hit it with that swing blade there, everything just sort of died. Like it just it wilted, it fell right over, right? So maybe that plus the added, you know, less competition for the clover, plus the fertilizer that I just put on, the rest of that fertilizer, threw that out by hand. Um, 
Maybe we got a good ply here, right? Maybe it'll help that clover boost over. If you look down there, man, there's a lot of clover in this plot. So I feel really good about that. And down in here, there wasn't as much clear weed and curly dock. So I really didn't have to knock as much of it off, right? It was really easy to do, just little spots here and there. And I was real careful where I walked, so I didn't mat it down. When you mow, right, you go through and you're driving over. And clover does not like to be stepped on or driven over, I will tell you that. Small plot like this, I could broadcast a seed in the fertilizer from the edge. You didn't have to walk on it. Real careful, just stepping in the bare spots, knocking down that stuff with the swing blade. And it's no worse for the wear. Still, it's going to be really healthy. We'll come back and check on this, but I think we're going to have something we can hunt over. Two observations. One is, boy, I love a small... I love clover food plots, but I really love a small food plot. I did all this by hand, put it in by hand. Cost me, you know, 50 bucks for lime, fertilizer, you know, seed. I used a little plot spike, cheapo clover seed, which works great. Put that on here, and that is what I use today to fill in all the gaps. Small plots, love them. That is an observation. Observation number two is woodchucks are the real problem. I came here thinking it was all that curly dock and clearweed, but you can see, if you look, man, he has been eating like you wouldn't believe. All around here where I'm standing, it was, it's little clover seed trying to come back up. I found his hole right back in here. What a sneaky little guy, huh? Or gal, look at that. Yeah, you think you're safe. I got news for you. I don't want to tell him my plans because he might hear me, but he comes out here and he doesn't go very far. Boy, he's right over here nipping the tops off these and deforesting my food plot. Look at this. You can tell where he's been. This hole is probably connected down across here to that hole underground. That's what they do. It's conspiracy is what it is. So, but fortunately, I have a tree stand right down here. So maybe I can sit in there with a crossbow or two. <laughs> See if we can take a poke up this way. Well, there's only one way to find out what happens to that woodchuck. And that is to subscribe and tune in for more videos right here on Death by Bungie. Until next time, all hail Bungie. Bungie.